When you know how, with just a camera, you can get shots of waterfalls like this. And today, I'll show you exactly what you need to do. Now, taking photographs of waterfalls can be pretty tricky. From spray coming off the waterfall and getting on your lens, to not being able to get the water looking how you want it. But it is pretty straightforward and a lot of fun when you do know what to do. Now, all you need is a camera, and if you have one, a tripod really helps. And don't worry about memorizing all of the things I'm gonna teach you. I'll put a cheat sheet at the end of the video so you can screen grab that, take it with you, and have all of this information at your fingertips. When you head out with your camera and just take a photograph of a waterfall, it'll normally look something like, something like this. I could see that water is frozen. This is because there's way too much light getting into your camera. And to get a good exposure, your camera is using a really fast shutter speed, which in turn is freezing all of that movement in the water. So the trick is to slow the shutter speed down by manipulating the other two principal settings, which are ISO and aperture. First of all, get your camera to its lowest ISO possible. In my a7 III, I can drop this to ISO 50. Now there are a few functions that blank this ISO level out. I know picture profiles is one of them. So you just turn that off and then you'll have access to it. Now I've got ISO 50, I'm gonna take another shot. And that is still freezing the water. And actually the sun has come out as well. So that's adding even more light into the scene. So what I'm gonna do is change my aperture. To get control of your aperture, you can either have the camera in manual mode, aperture priority or shutter priority. I've got it in aperture priority at the moment. Now you're probably thinking, how can I possibly change the aperture in shutter priority? But if you slow your shutter down in shutter priority, the camera will compensate by changing the aperture. Now the waterfall isn't going anywhere, so you can take your time to get the shot that you want. Now one thing with shooting such low shutter speeds is that when you're shooting handheld, you're likely to get blur in your shot. Now I'm not talking about the blur that we want in the waterfall, but blurring everything else that needs to be static. And this is where a tripod comes in handy. So you want to basically lock that camera off in place. So when you press your shutter button, you get a photo and only the water is blurring. Nothing else in the shot has any kind of blur in it. This is the safest way to keep your camera perfectly still. And if you don't have one, you can balance it on a rock or balance it on your bag, but I really wouldn't recommend this because this is the easiest way to pretty much drown your camera. Now it can be a little tripod like this or a bigger one like this, but anything that keeps your camera steady is great. The good thing with the bigger ones is that you can put the camera where you want it. You won't be limited to being low down you won't be limited where things might block your view of that waterfall. First of all, get your camera into manual mode with that ISO at its lowest. Set your aperture to somewhere around f11 to f16, then slow your shutter speed down until you get a good exposure. To do this, I have the zebras turned on at 105 plus. And I just make sure my highlights only have a hint of those zebras on them, like this. Alternatively, you could just use the light meter in your camera and then eyeball it on the back of the camera. If it looks really dark, push the meter into the plus numbers. If it looks too bright, push the meter into the minus numbers. Just take your time until you get the shot that you want. You can take as many shots as you want. And if you've got a really big memory card, you can pretty much stay there all day, take loads of shots of it, and then when you're home on your computer, then you can pick your favorite one. Now, if you do this in the middle of the day, you might struggle without any filters to get that shutter slow enough. So if you are planning on getting these cool waterfall photographs, the best time to go out is later in the day towards sunset. As the daylight starts to drop, this will in turn help you shoot with longer shutter speeds. As the shutter speed gets slower, you'll see the water blurs more and more, but there is a sweet spot. Some like more blur and others like less. 
So how slow you go is up to you, but in manual mode, you have complete control over your settings. So you can really dial in the shutter speed. Then all you need to do is put the camera into the self timer mode, which is normally a logo like this. For focusing, I'll put the camera into flexible spot on my a7 III. I'll then focus on the waterfall as that's my subject, and then I'll take the shot. And then it's a case of finding compositions around the waterfall that work. A good tip is to watch how the white bits of foam and the froth are moving in the water. Sometimes you'll get swirls or lines that you can make patterns with in your frame. Also, watch out for spray from the waterfall. If it's really flowing, it can put a lot of spray into the air and you'll end up with water spots on your lens. And with smaller apertures, you'll see these in your photographs. So just be careful of this and have a lens cloth handy just in case. I'll normally get to a waterfall and then look around for some good compositions. I'll try using wider angles or narrower angles by zooming in or out. Even with a kit lens, you can get some great shots. So don't be put off if you don't have fancy kits. As long as your camera shoots in manual mode, aperture priority or shutter priority, you should be able to get a good shot like the ones I'm getting. So with this next sequence of shots, I've taken them with different shutter speeds to see how it changes the look of the photograph. The slower the shutter speed, the more blurry the water looks. I personally like it at around about one second. Now, if you do have a set of filters, you can just shoot at any time of the day. And whether it's cloudy or sunny, you'll be able to blur that water. And the beauty with having ND filters is that you can play with apertures. And if you have a polarizer filter, this can help as well. This is the waterfall without a polarizer. And this is one with a polarizer. Check out the saturation of the two different shots and how the leaves and greenery look in the frame. It really can change that photo. But again, it's up to you as how you like it. So remember, switch to manual mode, use the lowest ISO number your camera has, shoot at sunset if there's too much light for your camera in the daytime. You just have to wait for that light to drop. Change your aperture to somewhere between f11 and f16. Then change your shutter speed until the meter on your camera changes to zero. If it's too dark, change your meter to the plus numbers. And if it's too bright, change it to the minus numbers. Set the drive mode to timer, get focus and take the shot. I always try to find waterfalls to shoot whenever we get to a new location. It's an excuse for a good hike. And at the end of it, as well as getting some exercise, you might get a good photograph. Now, if you can't get your shutter speed any slower than say one fifteenth of a second, and you don't have any ND filters, you can kind of cheat, but you will need a tripod. All you do is change your drive mode to rapid fire and take between 10 and 20 shots in rapid succession. Then in Photoshop, you just average them out and this will give you a longer shutter speed than you actually took. Now, if you don't know how to do this, you have to watch this video next. In it, I show you how you can get some really smooth, dreamy looking water in your frame as well as reducing any noise in your shots, which is always a bonus. I'll see you next time.